At Haynes Group, our value of how we engage helps to guide our choices and behaviour. While we enjoy having a laugh, there are a few things we're serious about. One of those things is safety. You've probably sat through a heap of safety shares, presentations and inductions. We've all been there. But you know as well as we do that even though it can all feel like the same message over and over again, there's a purpose behind it. We want you, the mate next to you and the person over there in the corner to go home safely to friends and family at the end of every day. Because when push comes to shove, while well, we hope that everyone loves coming to work, we're all working to make our own life outside of work better. There are a few things we want to take you through in this video. To start, we'll take you through the background of how we identified our 14 life-saving commitments for Haynes. Then you'll learn the four key risks for your business area, which we'll refer to as your in-the-know risks, along with the top three controls you can put in place to mitigate or eliminate those risks. To kick off, let's go through some history. We've got heaps of charts and info about how we came up with our life-saving commitments, but we'll spare you the details. The long and the short of it is, we leveraged the knowledge and experience of our parent company, Syme Darby Industrial, and adopted the top 10 life-saving commitments that they've identified through decades of working in heavy industry. Then, our Haynes Health, Safety, Environment and Quality team thoroughly researched the heck out of the Haynes Group's past incidents. We also undertook a detailed review of the specific tasks and associated risks in each of our business areas to make sure we didn't miss anything. From there, we identified four additional life-saving commitments that are unique to Haynes Group. We found out some other interesting stuff too. Like that people in their first three months of work are the most likely to get hurt on the job. Or that sometimes the issue is that people have actually been around longer than 12 months and become a bit more complacent and have higher rates of incidents. Or that those of you who are younger than 20 or still in your 20s have a much higher injury rate. And that there are certain job types that have more incidents than others. But the bottom line is, if we keep talking about safety, really keeping it top of mind, and implement the identified controls we're about to walk you through, our incident frequency goes down. Which means we go home in the same shape as we arrived at work, and so do the people working around us. Where we work at height, it's pretty obvious that there's a risk associated. A fall, even from what seems like a safe height, can have life-changing impacts. The top three controls for this risk are using the OEM access system for plant where possible, using a work platform with handrails like mobile work platforms, scaffolding or elevated working platforms, using full restraint techniques and being secured by fall arrest rated equipment. If it rolls, it has the potential to run you over. We work around some pretty huge equipment and the driver can't always see you due to blind spots. That's why it's important to be mindful of what's around us and where we walk. The top three controls for this risk are having traffic management plans in place with speed limits and exclusion zones identified, creating and following safe access walkways for pedestrians, using spotters used for movement where vision is restricted for the driver, We're lifting some pretty heavy sh on a regular basis. Ensuring that we're safe and secure is vital because if something were to drop, the consequence could be fatal. The top three controls for this risk are establishing an exclusion zone beneath the path of any suspended load, using tag lines, not hands, where the load requires guidance or alignment. Ensuring the load is supported by secondary controls before working on or beneath the load. We sometimes work on things that store huge amounts of pressure, including air, fluid or gases. When this pressure is released by accident, it can cause an injection injury. High pressure injection injuries may visually seem minor, but their potential consequences could be major. The top three controls for this risk are completion of required pre-start inspections and removing from service any unsafe or damaged items before use. 
confirming sources of stored energy are identified and depressurized using only tools or components that have been inspected and tagged compliant. Safety is obviously not just about a 10 minute video or a take five or any single step or activity. The only thing we can do that will make a real difference is to make an individual commitment to change our actions and behaviours to ensure we stop hurting people. It's a continuous process and it's something we should never forget about or stop focusing on. This is a continuous journey. You'll continue to hear more from our health, safety, environment and quality team, as well as your leaders, about putting safety at the front of our thinking in everything we do. In the meantime, you can visit Haynet, the Haynes Group intranet portal, where you'll find the videos about the other life-saving commitments we haven't covered in your businesses in the No video. You can also find important things there, like our Haynes Safety Interaction Form, Online Hazard Form, and Online Incident Form, which we hope you'll never have to use. If you have any questions or feedback, just reach out to your HSEQ representative, your leader, or send an email to hseq at haynesgroup.com.au. Thanks for tuning in and taking ownership to make Haynes a safer place for everyone.